Less than five miles separate Seattle University from the University of Washington. Seattle U at 12th and Cherry, and here you at University of Washington in the Mont Lake neighborhood. And it's been 29 years since Seattle U and Washington have played men's basketball head to head. In fact, it has been since the late 70s since these two teams have gotten together. And tonight, the Huskies and the Red Hawks will once again renew their acquaintance. Hi, everybody. Along with Lenny Wilkins, I'm Kevin Calabro. Yeah, not since 1979 when Lorenzo Romar was the team captain for this University of Washington team has Seattle U and Washington hooked up. And finally, they get together, Lenny. Yeah, I'll tell you, 79, a great year. <laughs> Can never forget that year winning a championship. But history says that the first meeting, 1953, the last time they met, the 20, January 29th, 1980. Big separation between those times. They've met uh, 23 times in the past, and of course the Chieftains, now the Red Hawks, the last win back in 1978 for Seattle U. Washington has had a marvelous year this year. They are at least the co-champions of the Pac-10, pending the outcome of their game against Washington State coming up this weekend. And Lenny, they have done it with a workmanlike effort from their senior, John Brockman. Uh, John Brockman has been fantastic, Kevin. I'll tell you, the big guy shows he's got great quickness. He anticipates, gets out on the break, and when he seals you, there's no one that's going to stop him getting to the basket. He has also shown that he has great hands. Right there, he controls it, put back on the basket. What a marvelous season this young man is having. And took two pretty good big guys to task in Arizona and Arizona State and had double-doubles in both of those ball games, averaging 20 and 11, shooting 61%, and named the Pac-10 Player of the Year. Well, those are two big, big uh, games that they won, Arizona and Arizona State. So I say that they got to be ready tonight, you know, because if not, Seattle U, they're hungry. They are hungry. They have nothing to lose. Washington, meantime, of course, cannot look forward to the Cougars in that very important game this weekend. Seattle U's uh, uh, Joe Calero, the head coach, said that he would play every zone known to man against Washington, trying to slow this game down. Well, he has to because Austin Powers, who is playing very well for him, is going to have his hands full. Austin's going to have to meet Brockman and try and keep him from getting to the block, and therefore the defenses are going to have to help. Michael Boxley, Austin Powers. It was Boxley, this man right here, who had the game-winning shot with 12 seconds to go, coming off their last win against South Dakota in South Dakota. That gives you a lot of confidence. He's feeling pretty good. You know, he believes that he can make that three-point shot. So look for the Chieftains to put up a few threes tonight. Joe Calero's ball club's won 11 of the last 12. He says, we will go anywhere, anytime to play anybody. We want to let the world know that we are here, we are back, and of course this is quite a statement game here tonight. The fact that they are in this building to take on the Huskies. We've got the tip for you in just a moment, right here on FSN. time between two universities that are separated geographically by about five miles. That's just a couple of neighborhoods, downtown Seattle. Joe Calero is as good a proponent for this university as they have ever had in his eighth season as the Red Hawks head coach. A record of 114 up, 104 down, and having a very good year this year. Calero's a guy who uh, wakes up seeing the sunny side of everything. 19 and 7 is ball club this year, honey. Uh, you know, he's a very upbeat guy, uh, Kevin. He, he's very positive. He has learned over the years that, you know, I can get your attention by talking directly to you, being positive, and showing you how I want it done. So I think he's done an uh, excellent job. You look at the other end, Lorenzo Romar. Hey, let me tell you something. I think he had he should be in the running for coach of the year because he's done a nice job. You look at this team at the beginning of the season, Kevin, and I didn't think they would be here. No. There are a lot of people who didn't think they would be here. Lorenzo probably thought they had a pretty good shot with some good people coming back, namely John Brockman. Justin Detman has had a magnificent year this year. Quincy Pondaxter coming back as the junior. Take a look at the lineup for the Huskies. Detman and Thomas 
Thomas, the new addition, the freshman, Darnell Gant, the workmanlike center, Quincy Pondexter, and John Bachman playing that power forward. Sean Burrow, Chris Gweff up front for the Redhawks, and this game is underway. Our officials this evening are Andy Burkhart, Tom Wood, and Mark Beasley. And Gant is double teamed. Already the Red Hawks open up in a zone. No, they, they want to play that zone. They want to protect, not give you easy opportunities, take the middle away, and force the Huskies to look for open shots from the outside to start with and not inside. Michael Boxley got a piece of that, deflects it out of bounds. Boxley from Mount Terrace High School. He defends the inbounds pass as they work it outside to Thomas. You know, the difficult thing about playing the zone, it's always tough to rebound in the zone because you're, you're playing areas, you know, and you're not boxing anyone out. The Huskies started out by getting the first rebound. Uh, I would think that they'll get a whole lot more. Great feed inside from Devlin. Low entry pass to Brockman. He turns and powers up, and it's 2-0 Washington. Well, you can't let Brockman get that kind of position. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, they're not going to stop him if he can turn into the basket like that. And Michael Wright, who is 6'5", 225, from Lakewood, Washington, will have the unenviable task of not only guarding De uh, Brockman, but trying to get away from him here on the offensive end. And Seattle U has to call a timeout as Chris Weff got locked up. And everybody else off the ball was tightly covered. Well, they really were, and that's what the Huskies are going to do. They're going to pressure you, and, and that's smart. I think make the other team as uncomfortable as possible. Don't let them get in a comfort zone. Calero told us before the ball game, we'll call timeouts at sometimes times you wouldn't think appropriate because we have got to slow this game down and control the tempo as much as we possibly can. This isn't a team that scores a lot of points. No, it isn't, but take a look right here. They swing the ball around, and he's going to make a great bounce pass inside as Brockman seals his man. He seals powers. Powers can do nothing but look. John Brockman just keeps working, working, and working. He knows if he's not having a good scoring game, he can rebound, play defense, and of course create a little havoc in the paint. Here's a kick out pass, nice pass inside of Boxley, taken away from him off the window by Pondexter, leading to the run out for Isaiah. Thomas trying to flick it outside, but Seattle closes fast on him. Good defensive play. Outlet pass right. This is Boxley juggling it on the end line. Drops it low to Austin Powers. He's 6'8", remember, has nice touch. Look at the turnaround hook up and in to tie it at 2-2. Well, you let him get down on the low block and make that turn. That, that's his strength right there, where he turns and flips up the little hook shot. Uh, great play there, but also it was a great play prior to that by Pondexter, my, my X Factor. <laughs> he came and made a great block. Powers, the senior from Glendale, doubles with Boxley on Gant and his pass to Brockman denied and tipped away out of bounds. Right here, you're going to see, right there, Powers gets that ball on the baseline. They're not really pressuring him that much. He makes the little turn, scores. That's a nice looking shot for a guy. Red Hawks sag in the middle. Force Brockman to unload to Gant, who doesn't ordinarily shoot the mid range shot. Got that one away, rims in and out. And then fighting for the rebound, deflected by the Red Hawks out of bounds. Okay, here's our X Factor. Watch him come and give great help. I mean, that's a beautiful block. He just pins it right to the ball, to the board, and the Huskies get out and run. Gentman receives the inbounds, and again, the Red Hawks pack the paint. Anticipating Brock, but he misses two, grabs his rebound, dumps it outside. Gentman fakes the three, drives, slants in. Rebound recovered by Gant, tips it to Dedman. Great pass inside. Brockman ready, hands turns, and feathers it in. Well, uh, you got to like the way the Huskies are playing because they're staying after it. You know they're going to out rebound the Red Hawks. So if they pass that ball around and get it inside, no one's going to stop Brockman. Now Washington extends the defense. This is Gant on Austin Powers. Taking over is a little point guard, Sean Burrow. Back to Powers for three. He can do this, not this time. Tipped by Boxley across the window and recovered in there by Chris Gweff. Drops it to Michael Wright for the turnaround hopper. And we've got a tie game at 4 4. Well, like you said, the, the Red Hawks have nothing to lose. I, I, I can remember being a young player and playing St. John's in New York at Madison Square Garden. Uh -huh. You get pumped up. You get, <laughs> and this, the, the Red Hawks are going to be pumped up for this game. 
Taking the train up from Providence <laughs> to the Garden to take on St. John's. Here's Thomas outside to Pondex for three. Nope. And the rebound recovered by Boxley. Joe Calero says we have traveled over 4,000 air miles and he's lost track of how many miles they covered by bus in playing the competition this year. Thomas falls down. Burrow comes away with a screen, but he missed it. He had the pick, but missed the land. Seattle U comes the other way. Uh, Seattle U just dodged the bullet there because they get, get the ball, they get out, get a chance to run. But uh, Isaiah, he's going to stay up and keep pressure. If you don't take care of the ball, he, Dentman, and when Noah comes in, all those guys can stay up. Look at the pressure right there. Forces a turnover, and now he's got clear sailing, and he probably should have laid it off the board. <laughs> and as you can see, just hauled down Burl by the jersey. Very physical game already. Seattle U will trap now at the elbow. They'll come out of that. But then they've got a 1-3-1 just as Oregon State likes to play. And that gave Washington a lot of trouble the, the first time the two teams played down at Corvallis. They had a difficult time in the first half with that 1-3-1. And this time Washington will turn the basketball over on a three-second call. Yeah, it, it, Brockman was caught looking that time because Seattle U is trapping, double-teaming. They're going to make you make the extra pass. Good game here early. Score tight, 4-4. Four, four. In a 4-4 four, four ball game. With 15.58 remaining in the first half. As promised, Seattle U has come out with a variety of zones. We've already seen the 2-1-2. Two, two. We have seen the 1-3-1. One, Offensively, Washington extends their defense. Well, Washington, they got a piece of that. Yeah, Washington's going to do a good job. They're going to come out and put some pressure on Seattle U. See, make them handle that ball. Make them move it around more than they want to. Elston Turner in the lineup for Washington, along with Vinoy Overton and Matthew Bryan Amonick. And it's Overton with the pick. He'll slide to the glass and lay it up and in. And that's what Vinoy Overton has given his ball club all year, Lenny, that pressure defense. Yeah, he comes off the bench. He's ready. He's playing a passing lane. He sees the floor extremely well, and that allows him to make a lot of good steals. Weth enters the ball here to Austin Powers. He'll turn, backing in Matthew Bryan Amity. This is Brockman with the recovery. Overton on the push, and Elston with the three in transition. Nope. Michael Wright digs it. Nice pass, cross court on the bounce. Boxley will take it. That's a tough shot. Get it out. At the rim, Matthew Bryan Amick. So one and done again for Seattle U. Washington obviously has a decided height advantage up front. Bryan Amick, 6'9", with long arms. Brockman listed at 6'8", more like about 6'6 six, six and a half, but very powerful inside, about 240. And he spins. Boxley anticipates, rips the ball, but a foul call on Boxley. And it sends John Brockman to the line. Well, that time they were in kind of a matchup zone. And when you're in a matchup zone, you almost wind up with man to man. And if you wind up man to man with Brockman on a low block, you're going to have your work cut out for you. Brockman has re recorded double doubles in four of the last five games, including the two big ones against Arizona and Arizona State, up against them. Very established big men. And of course, with a win this weekend against Washington State, the Huskies will clinch all by themselves the Pac-10 title. They have clinched the title, but could be the, the co-owners of that title should they lose against the Cougars. And should UCLA at home this weekend beat both Oregon and Oregon State. Well, you can't say enough about Brockman's improvement. I tell you, you look at his free throw shooting this year compared to what it's been in the past, and he's really focused and concentrating on making those shots. Brockman recovers the rebound and a long powers miss. Overton on the push. In a front court, Denton enters quickly to Brian Amity. Has space. Turner right into the trap, threw it away, deflected, and it is recovered by Burrow. Burrow, good looking athlete. Long, lanky. Outside they go to the left, he raising for the three. That is in and out. That offering from Drew Harris. Takes it up and in, and Joe Calero and Seattle, you need a timeout as the Huskies, following that timeout, got an adjustment. For one thing, 
Lorenzo Romar sent in three guys off the bench, Lenny. They got the message quickly. They lead 10 4. They really did because he wants them to keep the pressure out there. Right here, you're going to see Overton gets the ball. He looks up ahead. He makes a great pass. Brockman shows he has good hands. He makes a great catch on that. Brockman, 8.6 boards already. Yeah, here again, you get it to see a good look. I mean, that, that's great control for a big guy, running, catching the ball, and then have the presence of mind knowing where he is to lay it in. Brockman said it's just now starting to, to settle on him that he's closing in on the close of his career here at the University of Washington. What a career it has been. Look at him. He's fourth in scoring. Just a few points behind Todd McCullough. Bob Hubriggs, Chris Velp, one, two, three. He's already the all-time leader in rebounds for the University of Washington, averaging this year better than 11 per ball game. Michael Wright handling it up top. Nice little back cut. But again, the Huskies recover defensively, but Powers has the second offering, and they'll lay it up and in. Yeah, well, the Huskies gave good help then, and the Seattle U recovered it, and they got on the boards, got a second opportunity there. Ryan handling off balance. This, this one. And the Huskies can't get possession as Brockman had it go off the fingertips. Seattle U will take it. Substitution for the Huskies. Justin Holliday will step in. Well, both teams are going to go to their bench. You know, they're not going to wait around. They're going to use their bench, try and get different looks out there. And for Seattle U, it's a scramble. They're going to try and scramble up and down, get you to have mismatches, see if they can get some easy opportunities. Aaron Broussard is number two for the Red Hawks. Powers is the man in low. You know, substitution in the lineup. Lee Swanson from Montlake Terrace, 6'7, 210 senior, coming back after an injury. Justin Holiday, known as the fireman. And Swanson, his counterpart, Joe Calero, said, We miss his defense, we'll need him. And that link at 6'7 inside, if we have any chance. Chris okay. Webb with it. You know, Holiday and Overton, they, they really bring defense off the bench. Long arms, quickness, and they look the pressure to go every time. Oh, well, Lenny, look out play. now. <laughs> Little French pastry, baby. Yeah, yeah. Going around the world, finishing lefty with the reverse. Isaiah Thomas, I love watching him. <laughs> Don't you? I mean. He, well, he, he, yeah, he's got, he's no no fear in him. <laughs> you know, you get out on the break. And look, look at this play by Holiday. They're, they're starting to feel it right now. See how you may have to call another timeout to stop this. Holiday looking off the defender and laying it in. Powers holding. What's been most impressive is the uh, the Husky defense. That's you know no sooner do I brag on the defense than there's the first drive of the game. Chris Webb getting into a crack laying it up, but it will not count. They say he's fouled out on the floor. Yeah, right here, good defense. Get the ball out. Thomas is out front on the break, and he takes it to the other side of the basket where he knows no one can come and help, lays it off the board. That's a nice play, and that's being real smart on Isaiah Thomas's part. 461 points this season. Ties University of Washington freshman record. With one more point, he would surpass Spencer Hawes. And his name in the record book. I think that's going to happen. <laughs> I think it, it may happen here in the next 15 seconds. Broussard goes to work. They drill about out of there, then Pondexter gets all over. Red Hawk shooting three of 14 here in the early going. Broussard misses the hook. Brian Ammoning the rebound. Up ahead to Holiday. On Dexter, middle of the zone, flicks out to Thomas. Good movement of the ball, quick movement of the ball. Holiday, shovel to Quincy Pondexter. Hawks may have gotten a piece of that. They come the other way. Nice spirited drive in through traffic. Sean Burrell from Berkeley, California, fifth year senior, got hammered. He'll step up for two when we come back after the timeout. 11 31 remaining here in the first. The Huskies have awakened and they have taken an eight point lead over Seattle University, 14 6. 
Well, nearly halfway through the first half, Washington leading Seattle U 14 to 6, along with the Hall of Famer Lenny Wilkins, Kevin Calabro here. The Red Hawk is in attendance as well. D1 basketball is back at Seattle U after a period of well, a long time, 1980 to present day. Our game recap: the Red Hawks at 3 of 15, and the Huskies 6 of 16. 14-7 rebounding edge held by the Huskies and a 12-2 point in the paint advantage. We mentioned during uh, our introduction to the broadcast that the last time the two clubs met was 1979 when Lorenzo Romar was the team captain of this Husky basketball team. And then they went off into the wilds of the NAIA did Seattle U. For Washington a bit of history. Their first Pac-10 title. Since 1953, when the conference was known as the PCC. That was the year they went to the Final Four. They beat LSU and Bob Pettit. <laughs> I know we, I got a big fan of Bob Pettit here in the booth. That's, former teammate of yours. That's right. He, he was one of the great all-time players. I'll tell you, uh, he really made the St. Louis Hawks back in those years. One of the top 50 all-time in the history of the NBA. Here's Overton with it now. Matthew Bryan Ammon, a great cut right under that zone, and Holiday to receive it and lay it in. Well, I tell you, you got to like the intensity that the Huskies are playing with. Lorenzo's got their attention because what they're doing is they're coming out, they're pressuring, they're pushing the ball up the court, they're defending, and also they're moving it against the zone. They're not trying to do it all by themselves. Swanson all alone missed it. And the rebound hauled down by Michael Wright. Wright doubled. It's up to Swanson. He'll go to work. Nice little up and under move. The lefty, though, left it short. Holiday the rebound. There's Thomas with him. Off to Pondexter. Overthrew him. Deflected away. Off Seattle hands. And it'll be Washington basketball. Well, you got to pass the ball against the zone. And if you do, good things happen. Right here, they swing the ball around. Go to the top. Great area to pass the ball. Great cut underneath. And they get a score. So, you know, you got to move it against the zone. Holiday comes out and immediately Cameron Dollar is talking to him about that last fast break Lenny it's good coaching is Cameron and then Jim Shaw will talk to him a little bit too about how that was set up because he had Thomas on his left side. Yes yes kick the ball to the wing up ahead and usually what happens the defense shifts it'll come right back to you. That's good coaching that's what you want you want when your players to come out of the game someone is telling them what's going on what happened. Holiday just a fine player. You know, he, he's a selfless player, and each one of his teammates are selfless players. That's why Washington has gotten to where they are. They're good kids, good young men. They, they really are, and, uh, you know, they, they, their coaching staff does a great job. They keep the players in form. They talk to them. These players respect one another. Brockman steps up at the line, and that free throw line has been a problem for the Huskies. Well, in the first half of the season, it was a real issue. Second half, they started to iron that out. Again, it was a lot attributed to coaching and the repetitive nature of their drills, the ladder drill. You probably know that story by now. Here's Brockman inside. Missed that little hook shot. The ball deflected out of bounds. The Huskies now shooting 69% as a team for the year. Not great, but sure better than it, it was in the first half of the season. And in conference, shooting 73% at the line. Yeah, and it'll get better as the, as the season comes down to the end. And by the time they start to go into the Pac-10 tournament and also the NC2A, hopefully their free throw shooting will improve tremendously. Must be set up and again attack that zone by flicking it inside of Brockman, who had backed Michael Wright all the way to the cup. I tell you, you get that kind of position, I can score there. <laughs> I'm, I'm just teasing. But, but you let a guy like Brockman get that close to the basket where it's just a flip, he's going to make that. He, he's too good. I believe you can score from there. He is <laughs> twisting into the lane. The Red Hawks, Drew Harris. Harris is fouled. Well, a moment ago, Austin Powers put a bone-jarring screen on Thomas, knocking him to the deck. Well, the Huskies are just going to be too tough in the paint for Seattle. You, I mean, you know, you're going to have to double team trap way ahead of time. You can't play behind a guy like Brockman. He's going to get too many opportunities. And if the Huskies continue to pass the ball, they'll get back cuts. You move the ball around the top to the foul line, and then the wings cut in like they do, they're going to get some easy opportunities. So I, I think the Huskies are playing very smart. They're not taking this team for granted. 
Drew Harris from East of the Mountains, Yakima, Washington, Eisenhower High School, sophomore. Six footer splits a pair of free throws, 20 to 8. Washington on top. Boxley outside on Thomas. Redhawks try to pinch on Gant now at the sideline, but he throws a skip pass outside. Huskies have 18 to shoot. Thomas looking for the three. That one sails wide of the rim. Right with a rebound that shoots it too far out in front of Boxley and out of bounds. Well, Boxley stopped to try and receive that pass. He should have kept just going. <laughs> it was a long pass. If, if he had kept going, he'd had a layup. And Thomas just a bucket away from realizing a record for the season. Dentman has shot the lights out from three point land this year. Knocks down another one and he adds to the resume. Now you don't cover him in his own. <laughs> Washington is on a, what, a 13 to 2 run? <laughs> They'll be on a 20 to 2 run if you lay that guy wide open. Dentman a cold blooded 43% from three. In the meantime, the Red Hawks offering from Chris Webb sails wide. 15 to shoot. Red Hawks get it back. Michael Wright gets into the air. He got jostled. Ball stripped out of bounds, and it will be awarded to Seattle U. Here's what passing around does, because the zone is shifting. It's playing areas. It's not playing a man. And when you have a shooter like Detman, that's what's going to happen. Detman and Thomas share the scoring honors for the Husky. Two-tenths of one point separate the two. Thomas 15.8, Detman 15.6, just past Nate Robinson for fifth most in the school history with 128 career three-point field goals made. And boy, is Nate Robinson having a great second half of the season. He had a monster game shortly before the All-Star break. Then, of course, he became kryptonite, as you know. Right. <laughs> right. The rest of his history, man, he's been sensational. I'll tell you, he, he really has been. And he's letting everybody know it, too. <laughs> In fact, I read today that the NBA and uh, DC Comics are trying to work an arrangement out so that they can market the kryptonite T-shirts. Coming to a team store near you. Seattle U will bring it in bounds. They've got 34 to shoot. Yeah, and they have not made a field goal in the last 5, 15 minutes. And they need one badly because if not, the Huskies are going to run away with this game in the first half. Pondexter the other way lays it in easily. Red Hawks 3 of 21 shooting. Washington is 10 for 22. I give a lot of credit to the Huskies defense, Kevin. Look at this. I mean, they're out there pressing, trapping. You know, they're not giving them any easy opportunities. Powers has to reach over his own man, Chris Webb, to get it. Finds Boxley for three. Got it. So Michael Boxley gets him on the board. 25-11 the count. Huskies on top. Thomas the other way to the rim. Laid it up and it rolls in. And Isaiah Thomas now is the all-time leader in Washington history for a freshman in points scored. Well, you got to love the way he took the ball because the defense is running back. They turn their back on you. A smart guard like Isaiah Thomas is going to run right up your back, take it to the basket. Nice play by Isaiah Thomas. Harris gets in the middle. Kicks it outside. Michael Wright will drive and kick, but Brockman plays the passing lane, has a steal out ahead to Thomas, races to the glass, and is shoved by Gweth, and then grabs Gweth's jersey, I think just trying to arrest himself because he was spinning wildly down there, headed toward the goal stance, and then they both kind of tumble into the crowd. They're all right. And Thomas, fouled by Gweth, will head to the line here in a moment. A timeout called on the floor. Well, right there, you're going to see they got their backs turned, and he just takes it to the basket. He makes it look simple, but only a great player can do that. Seven minutes left here in the first half, and Isaiah Thomas just became the all-time leader in freshman scoring, University of Washington history. And he has done it with a variety of explosive drives into the lane. The diminutive left-hander from Curtis High School down in Tacoma. Most notable candidate for the Pac-10 Freshman of the Year. Clay Thompson having a very good year as well. East of the Mountains at Washington State University. Thomas seeing 28 a game, 28 minutes a game, leading this Husky team in scoring, Lenny, and he is fifth among all players in scoring in league games and is the Pac-10's top freshman scorer overall. Yeah, you got two notable candidates there. Clay Thompson is playing very well also, but I think it comes down to 
who is making their team better. You know, which team is really stepping up and doing the job. And right now, you got to say that the edge has to go to Isaiah Thomas at, at this point in time. Most notably, the year that Justin Dentman has had a direct result of the play of Isaiah Thomas. No question, you've got a guy that can streak, get into the rim, drive and kick the way he can. If you're Dentman, who's worked tirelessly with that jump shot of the offseason, it's great to see a guy who can drive and kick like that. He knows you're on the wing and he'll find you. Yeah, yeah. A anytime you got a guard that can really penetrate like that, you make yourself available. You slide <laughs> down into his vision because you know he'll give it up to you. So Dentman is having a great year and uh, he can attribute some of that to Isaiah Thomas. Well, you get on that guy's calendar. Got an opening? I'm there. Sean Burrell with it. Austin Powers, Boxley, Wright, and Broussard for Seattle U. This is Aaron Broussard with it. Husky's defense is just they're just everywhere. Overton nearly had a pick. Wright gives to Powers trying to back in. Camp. Overton nearly got that one. Four to shoot. Powers recovers. Right back up and in. And they say it charged. Well, that's what good pressure defense will do for you. Because you confuse the other team. They're trying to see the clock. They can't see anything. Shot has to go up. And right here, they anticipate right there. Good position defense. And has nowhere to go. Tough call, but it's the right call. Fallon powers his first. 17-point Husky lead. Scott Suggs in the lineup now. Good-looking freshman. From near St. Louis, Missouri. Well, he threw that pass right into the hands of Broussard, who will take it right at Suggs. Foul call on Overton, trying to get a piece of that. I'll tell you, the Huskies' defense is making a huge difference because, you know, they're, they're putting so much pressure on Seattle U that they're only shooting like four for 23 or 24. And Seattle U, they both got four steals. So they're both anticipating well. But the Huskies' defense has the edge because they're really making it happen. They're making these guys, I mean, four for 23. <laughs> that, 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 you know, huge percentage that it's going the opposite way. College Hoops returns Thursday with a Pac-10 showdown. As the Cal Golden Bears take on the Arizona Wildcats, both teams looking to gain some momentum before the Pac-10 tournament. The coverage beginning Thursday at 7.30 p.m. on FSN and high definition on FSN HD. That is a big game for the Arizona Wildcats, who are by uh, every account one of those four to five bubble teams in the United States. Playing college basketball, over 300 D1 programs. Playing college basketball, all of them. Well, not all, but some looking to go on to the postseason. And Arizona certainly is one of the bubble teams. Pac-10 had six teams last year participating. If Arizona were to make it, it would be five by all accounting by those that keep track and do the bracketology. Take a look at the Pac-10 standings. You have UW, UCLA, Arizona State, Cal, and Arizona. Realistically, there would be five teams looking toward the tournament, the NCAA tournament, with, again, Arizona being a bubble team at 8-8 eight eight in the conference. Cal at 6. Now, UCLA's got to play the Oregon schools in Los Angeles, while the Huskies have one game left, and that, of course, is against Washington State here in Seattle. That becomes a huge game because uh, they take that game, then they got the Pac-10 wrapped up. And, and who knows what's going to happen so far as, you know, the Pac-10 tournament, the seeding, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Broussard is hammered trying to get to the rim, and he'll step back up to the line. 28-12 the count. 5.08 to go here in this first half. Foul on Matthew Bryan Amity. That is his first. We're starting averaging six points, four rebounds, and seeing about 15 minutes per contest. Broussard has played in the tw all 26 games this year. He is a freshman, so he will be uh, certainly counted upon in the 
next few years to bolster this program. He is from Federal Way High School. That's what Joe Calero will have to do is recruit here from the area. And as we know, this area is rich in basketball talent coming out of high schools. It's just a matter of keeping them around here. Yeah, and 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 I think when you have programs like this, like you know Gonzaga, like Washington State, you know, like the Huskies, and then now Seattle U. They're going to keep some of those players here. Gonzaga 14 and 0 in the West Coast Conference. They'll go to their tournament play. Been a lot of talk about Seattle U possibly joining the WCC. They have to first be invited. They have not yet been invited. And then Joe Polaro was telling us that uh, they also are developing a men's baseball program at Seattle U with some other programs as well. Golf being another one. And they would like to, uh, when they go to a conference, and it wouldn't necessarily be the WCC, but when they go to the conference, they obviously want to play more than men's basketball, more than one sport at conference. Exactly, Kevin. They, they, they want to see that you have a full program, right. whether it's tennis, volleyball, baseball, soccer. You, you have to show that. You show that, then they want to invite you because now they can set up a great program. Well, road back to Division One for Seattle this season. Uh, they have been allowed to play a mix of Division One and non-Division One opponents. They would not be eligible for the NCAA tournament this year. They would be eligible, however, for the NIT and two other postseason tournaments. Next season, they will be required to play a full Division One schedule. Uh, they'll be eligible for NCAA postseason in the year 2012 and 13 academic year. Well, I'd like to see them get in one of those tournaments and do well because I, I think they've had a pretty good year considering first time back and all that time. Overton will bring it in bounds to find next to Double pumps and missed it. And the rebound recovered by Seattle U. Well, they could play in that CBI tournament for the collegeinsiders.com tournament. There's a ball deflected. On Dexter ahead to Overton. Oh, oh, to look out. oh my, you just hate to see that. As Pond Dexter goes up for the alley oop and crashes over Chris Gweff. This is what coaches worry about all the time, especially when you have a game like this and you know you got a big one coming up. You don't want to see anyone get hurt. And uh, a great pass, you know, hopefully. You know, he, I, I think he might have sprained his wrist a little bit because you see he tried to get his hands mm -hmm. out in front of him, so hopefully he did. And so Quincy Down just took a horrific fall there, and as Lenny mentioned, he, it appeared that he reached out. We'll get a replay, obviously, mm -hmm. here in, in moments, but he appeared he reached out with uh, the left arm to uh, cushion the fall and then crashed to the floor, and there is just a hush over this crowd here at uh, Bank America. Pondexter having a very good year this year. The junior is a very likable young man and Chris Gweth obviously got into position there. Uh, Pondexter went high into the air to get the alley-oop and then crashed to the floor falling over Gweth. Here you get a chance to get a good look at this. He goes up makes the play and he's fallen over the man and yeah he kind of gets his right shoulder down there. So I'm, I'm hoping, you know, that he's going to be fine. Yeah, looking at that, you just hope the shoulder hasn't been separated. Right. But well, obviously, wish for the best as uh, they attend to him down there. That is uh, the athletic trainer Pat Jenkins taking a look at Q. And so Pondexter will walk off the floor under his own power. But again, that the right shoulder is probably what will be uh, examined as they take him back to the locker room. So Suggs will step in for Matthew with Matthew Bryant Avening, Darnell Gant, Justin Detman at Benoit Overton. Seattle U up the floor. They've made just one field goal in the last 9-19. They're one and 13 in that stretch. And the Husky defense continues to persist and they force another turnover. And Seattle U. That is their ninth of the game. 
Well, that, that's great defense, and, and the nice thing about it is even the guys coming off the bench are bringing that defensive intensity with them. So they're going to keep the pressure up all game. This will bode well for them, especially when they get into tournament time. Seattle U back in the zone, trying to match up, but Overton on the wing finds some space and drills a three. 33-13, 20 point Husky lead, 340 to go, first half. Aaron Broussard off to Chris Gweth. The pull up Jimmy, got it. Nice look there by Gweth. Dentman outside for three. Rebound deflection. Gweth trying to pick it up off the floor. Austin Powers is there. Look out, Michael Wright handling it on the open floor, and Dentman just picks his pocket. That, that's good defense. A guy is running down the floor, not paying attention. Just come right up behind him and take it away. Fifth steal for the Huskies. Darnell Gant, good looking turnaround hopper by the freshman from Crenshaw High School, redshirted last year, and he has been a big part of the Husky success this year. Overton stops play with a foul. And a timeout called with 2.46 left in the first half. This is what many people expected it would be. Huskies up 20 with 2.46 left in the half. Huskies up by 20 on the Red Hawks. 2.46 left here in the first half of play. This date in history, 1966. Seattle U defeated Texas Western 74 72. It's the only loss that year for the Miners of Texas Western. Texas Western, the first team with an all black starting lineup to win. The NCAAs beat Adolf Rupp in the Kentucky Bluegrass State. Pat Riley on that team. That Kentucky team. <laughs> Pat Riley, Tommy Cron. Do you remember Tommy Cron? Crash. Played here for the Sonics for a little Crash bit. Crash Cron. Yeah. <laughs> Don Haskins, of course, uh, the coach of that Texas Western Ball Club, just passed away a year or so ago. And uh, that is now UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso. They had a player on that team, Big Daddy Latin. Uh, yes. You remember? <laughs> yep. Well, they did a movie, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Glory Road, the name of that movie. Great movie. If you've not seen that, you love sports, you love sports movies, it's, it's, it's a good one. The story of that team, the way they came together, Lee Swanson. Mm -hmm. Flicks it up and in. Against all odds. Beating a Kentucky team that many people said wasn't that good a team anyway. Not to diminish what they did, but it wasn't one of the better Kentucky teams. No, no, they, they, they were decent. They executed well, but they were slow. Okay, they didn't have any quickness. <laughs> and, and, and really, and that's why, you know, Texas Western was able to stay with them. Huskies Quincy Pondexter, if you're just joining us, was taken back to the locker room. He was on his own two feet. He uh, was involved in a horrendous crash. He went up to uh, redirect the ball near the rim, was way up, fully extended, and came crashing down off Chris Gweth, who really had nowhere to go on the play. Gweth uh, wasn't at all at fault in that play. And uh, Pondexter landed awkwardly, it appeared, on his right shoulder. So he was taken to the locker room. We hope to get some word on him from the uh, sports information office, probably by half. Dentman tied up. And in the uh, possession, arrow, it goes to Seattle U. Take a look at this. Yeah, the, he makes the pass over. Now the pass comes back. He's going up to dunk, but the player underneath right there. Hey, boy, that's a tough landing. That's a tough landing. He's very fortunate he didn't get seriously injured. Dentman rips powers, fakes and drives, and lays it up and in. Yeah, he wasn't about to lob one toward the rim to Brockman after what it just happened. Here's Thomas. Got the rip. Dentman inside to Brockman, and he spins right into Gweth, who ties him up. Now, this is where the Huskies, uh, and I'm sure Lorenzo re reminded them, don't get sloppy, don't get careless. Just a minute, 
Minute and a half to go to the half. Let's finish the half strong. Turner will bring it in bounds. Dentman will drop it to Brock when he spins and had it stripped. And out of bounds, Seattle U will take it. Brockman amazed. <laughs> Big John tonight. Is it a heck of an effort again? Brockman, the Pac-10 Player of the Week, 12 points and seven rebounds. Drew Harris across midcourt. Powers will take over. Running right-hander by Powers off the mark. Turner with a rebound. Long lead pass to Holiday. He juggled it. Tried to flick it outside, and last touched by Chris Gweth out of bounds. Husky ball. Well, I like the way the Huskies look up the court. If they have a teammate up there, they're going to throw the ball up. And, and that's just good basketball. Good, smart basketball. Seeing the floor, getting everybody involved. Taylor Olsen in the lineup now, the redhead from Blanchett High School. Thomas leans back and drills a two pointer from mid range. Now you can't let him get to that area and not be guarding him. You know, he's just too good a player. He's showing you. He can get to the basket, he can pull up for the mid range jumper, or he can step behind the line and make shots. Graff handles the trap well. Over to Olsen. He'll raise. Thomas with a rebound. Husky slowing up with 17 seconds left in the half. 39-19. Washington leading the Red Hawks. From Seattle U. About five miles away. 12th and Cherry. Thomas coming off the screen. Elevating for three. Isaiah Thomas. I'll tell you, he's feeling it right now. <laughs> Great way to finish the half. You'll see right here, he's going to take it down. He's aware of the clock. He gets them to drop back, goes up. No one really challenges him. What a great look at the basket. So, you know, that's what the Huskies do. They finish it off strong, 42 to 19. That's our halftime score. And now let's send it to the College Hoops Northwest Studios, Angie Mentink and Francis Williams standing by. The second half for the Washington Huskies. There was a moment there where there was a collective gasp here among the crowd. It got silent as he was down on the floor. He took a terrible fall, tumbling down on his right shoulder. Did get up on his own two feet and walked off with the assistance of the trainer, Lenny. But that had all the uh, the indications of maybe being a season-ending injury. Well, it was a very scary moment, Kevin, and I've been told that he has bruised ribs. So, you know, when he tucked his arm underneath, you'll take a look as he gets out on the break here, he makes the pass, and now he's going up and he doesn't see the guy behind him, and, and turning over like that, I'm sure those ribs got all twisted up. So, you know, he's back and that's what's good. He's gonna start in the second half. There is Quincy being helped out of the arena and back into the locker room. And he, <laughs> he's a gamer. He is going to start this second half. In fact, Lorenzo Romer is going to start his starting lineup here to begin the second half against Seattle U, 42 to 19. Lenny, we talked uh, at halftime off the air about the, the necessity for the Huskies to end this issue here in the opening five minutes of the second half. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to get your unit out there. You want to keep the rhythm going, the flow of the game, and now you want to put this team away so that you can make liberal substitutions and get those guys on the bench. Red Hawks open up in the zone as they have played through the entire first half. And they force a turnover. Foxley with it on the break. Can't deflect this one. Joe Calero and the Red Hawks bench thought maybe that should have been goaltending. <laughs> Did it hit the glass first? Don't know, but Gant took it away. Here come the Huskies. Bentman has it jabbed away. 
And trying to flick it down the floor. The Red Hawks get it away. Brockman is up an easy bucket. A uh, real nice play by Isaiah Thomas because he saw Brockman in the middle there. And the big guy is not going to give up on anything. So they're going after it. So you want to put this game away soon. Let's get these guys off the floor. We take a look at this here. You see right there, great pass by Isaiah Thomas. Now they're going to get out and get the ball to court. Brockman sees it. Now he takes off and makes a great block. Blocking Michael Wright, and now the Red Hawks bring it in bounds. Boxley out on the wing to Burl, disrupted by Dentman, had a piece. Pondexter trying to hand off. Pondexter goes to the floor. Brockman goes to the floor. Getting very physical here in the opening minute and 15 seconds as Boxley trips up Brockman. How about Pondexter? He goes to the deck after suffering bruised ribs in the first half. Okay, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. <laughs> you know, let, let, let's get this lead up a little bit more and get everybody out. <laughs> and how do you suppose Romar's feeling all about this? Huh? He's nervous right now. <laughs> that picture a moment ago told the story, didn't it? He was right on the edge of his seat. Chris Gwett has it stripped away. Pondexter with it. Out ahead of Dentman to the glass, laid it in. Good Ball play. points for Dentman tonight. Yeah, good play by Dentman because what he did was he extended the ball out and used the backboard. That way he wasn't going to get knocked down. So that was smart play. 46-19 count. So what's the criteria here <laughs> in terms of what's the magic number for a lead? Pondexter <laughs> comes in, rips it from Austin Powers, and a foul call. <laughs> yeah, 46 19. I mean, That's the criteria. Yeah, no, I'm only kidding. Up 27. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I think that he, he wanted to keep the rhythm going sure. of the game, the flow, and keep his guys out there, not let them, you know, figure it, the game is over. Make them keep working. Pondexter ahead of Brockman. Underthrown. He goes to the deck and throws it outside here to Dentman. Thomas will handle. Dentman right side to Pondexter. Now Gant will take over. Inside of Brockman. Turn around, jump hook. Nope. Brockman grabs it and lays it up and in. Uh, the guy is relentless, I'll tell you. You got to love what he does. I mean, he puts the ball up there, goes right back after it, gets the put back. 16 for Brockman. Right to the turnaround jumper, got it from 15 feet straight away. Three minutes into the second half, and the Huskies on top by 27. Pondexter, Brockman, Gant, Thomas, and Dentman. Start the second half. Kent, turn around, jumper missed it. Pondexter tipped it up and in. I think Pondex is okay. I think he's yeah. all right. <laughs> That's a nice tip to go in there amongst traffic and get up and tip the ball away. How about this play? Thomas deflects it off the official. Gets it back and sets up Dentman for the runner. And a timeout called by Seattle U as the Huskies now have exploded off to a 31 point lead. And the doctor said, Quincy Pondexter, get back out there. <laughs> Huskies leading Seattle U 52 21 Washington ranked number 16 in the country having an outstanding year John Brockman all time leading rebounder for the Huskies and he is right now fourth all time leading scorer closing in quickly on Tom McCullough for number three he's done it in a variety of ways tonight. Well, he really has you, you got to give this big guy so much credit because he's inside he's fighting on the boards he gets putbacks he comes out and he plays defense. And if you look at the players, the candidates, you know, James Harden's playing pretty good, but I, I think Brockman is way ahead. I think this, you've got to think about Brockman, maybe Collison, and then Hill. That, that's the order I would have him in so far. You know, what have they done for their team? So Brockman's been the bedrock, 15 points, better than 11 rebounds, shooting 53% from the field. And uh, 
Of course, you cannot quibble at all with the results. A 22 and 7 record for the Huskies. 13 and 4 in conference. 7 and 1 at home, 6 and 3 away in conference. After the timeout now, Matthew Bryan Amening steps in for Brockman. Thomas, Dentman, Gant, and Pondexter stay on the floor. This is Broussard inside. He'll lay it up and in. And Brockman comes out only because he opened up a, a scratch. He's got a strawberry on the right knee. Otherwise, I think Lenny Heat would probably come in <laughs> after that timeout with the four minutes gone by and a half. Gant, long range jumper, got it. Right. Darnell Gant. If, he, if the Huskies keep playing the way they are, they're moving the ball, they're playing a the great defense, they're scoring, I would say that Brockman may not get back in the game. Powers will throw outside of Broussard. Boxley handles. Drew Harris for three. The lefty comes right back at another lefty, Isaiah Thomas, and knocks that one down. 54 26. 15 37 to go in the second half. Matthew Bryan Avening turns and twitches and fouled by Austin Powers. Well, you cannot be a nervous Nelly to be a coach <laughs> in big time college basketball or certainly in the NBA. Because uh, if you were, you wouldn't have any of your starting five in right now. <laughs> we come back. It's Who Am I? The Red Ox version in a moment here on FSN. Huskies up uh, a whopping 28 on the Red Hawks from Seattle U. 15 and a half minutes to go in the second half. It's time now for Who Am I? It's an easy game to play. We simply give you some obscure question. We ask for an equally obscure answer. Who Am I? The Red Hawks version. Who is the last Seattle University player to play in the NBA? Ooh, this is a good That's one. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to guess. Uh, can I guess? <laughs> All right, I'm going to guess Jawan Oldham for the Chicago Bulls. He's coached by, oh, there he is. There he is. But he was playing for the Lakers, apparently, at that time. <laughs> Although he did play for the Bulls, played for uh, Doug Collins. The old madhouse on Madison. Here's Jawan. Big seven-footer. Played 329 games in the NBA from 81 to 91. Boy, 10 years. He got 10 years in. That's yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. I think it was actually on that Chicago team when uh, Michael and Michael Jordan's uh, rookie year. So he, Juwan probably got some stories to tell. <laughs> he better I not. Love, I love that old place there in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, that the was, on Madison. Oh, and that was. I, I, I won't tell you some of the stories. That, that was a terrible place. <laughs> <laughs> Fun place to watch. Yeah. Yeah. But you had to dress down in the basement. Right. The dressing room, but down in the old drafty basement. Here's Harris into the lane. And a foul called as Brian Amening went up, and Harris took a hard spill. So the sophomore from Eisenhower High School pops right up. Dentman got a piece of him. Pondexter back out. Matthew Brian Amening, Darnell Gant. Uh, Overton is in now with Dentman. Uh, Harrison is a, he can be a decent player. He has some good quickness. Yeah. He can get to the basket. You know the big thing is that uh, spacing on the floor because uh, Seattle U right now is not shooting the ball real well. That allows the Huskies just to collapse. And Harris hits the second. Seattle University comes into this game 19 and seven. They won 11 of their last 12 ball games. They just went up to South Dakota and beat South Dakota. After losing to North Dakota. You know, if you're there, you might as well play both North and South Dakota. Because you don't want to go back. Although they are going back in a week to play South Dakota in a mini round robin four team tournament. Of course, it was nine degrees last week when they left. It'll be maybe. Ball me 20 next week when they get there. Well, they had good memories. They, they came from behind, won a big <laughs> game, right. you know. Right. So they're going to go back and try to do it again. Matthew Bryan Amity, nice pass and close quarters to Pondexter for the land. Dexter. 
Harris up into the mix. Bought Broussard with a rebound. He'll lay it in. And a 20-second timeout called on the floor. Seattle Youth has made their last four field goal attempts. Well, I'll tell you, Quincy Pondexter, you couldn't tell that he took that kind of spill. Because he's still playing hard, nice pass, then cuts to the basket and finishes strong. So he's not feeling any effects of that fall when you look at what he's doing out there on the court. Pondexter's had a heck of a year. Averaging career highs in points, rebounds, minutes, and field goal percentage. He has started every game this year. And in the last eight games, all conference games, all crucial games, Averaging 16 points and shooting 58% from the field. And even after that horrendous fall, comes back to start the second half, persists, and is still playing five and a half minutes into this second half. Well, I'll tell you, Kevin, he's still my X factor for the Huskies. I, I just think the guy has got an active, live body, he makes a lot of things happen. And, uh, you know, he's a real asset out there on the floor. Brian Ammoning outside of Denton fakes Webb off his feet and knocks down the Jimmy. Good little adjustment from Denton. Uh, great patience on his part. Some guys would try and get the shot off and get the foul. He let him go by, stepped in, in his rhythm, and made a two-pointer. This Red Hawk team has beaten Eastern Washington at Eastern in overtime. Powers of the rebound up and in. They beat Loyola. Of Los Angeles, member of the WCC, back at Key Arena in a game we did back on uh, New Year's Day, as a matter of fact. Lost narrowly to a Portland ball club at Portland by four. That's a team that beat the Huskies, remember, at the beginning of the year. Now, Huskies have come a long way from that time, Kevin. Yeah. I remember doing that game at the studio, and I just couldn't believe how the Huskies had played. But they've matured, they've grown together. You know, they really know how to go out and defend, and they're finishing games so much better than earlier in the season. The Englishman, Matthew Bryan Ammoning to the line from London, England. Having a very good sophomore year. In comes Elston Turner. He has, uh, by all accounts, he's really slowed his game down this year. He was always seemed to be in a rush last year. But, uh, a better handle on what he is expected to do this year and has fit into a nice role coming off that bench. Closes out on Powers, makes that a tough deal. He missed it. Swanson the rebound. Nope. Powers again, reloads. There's Matthew Bryan Amity. Says, get that SAT out of here. Right it comes here to Harris. He'll drive into the lane and a blocking foul call. I think Amity has so much potential, you know, and he's slowed down a little bit this year. He has the luxury to play behind a guy like Brockman. I, I think next year they should expect big things from him. I think he, he could step up. We also have a, a red shirt sitting on the bench literally here tonight. Tyrese Brashear, 6'7", 255. They say he is a terrific practice player going head-to-head -head with Brockman all year long. And so you got a guy like that. They'll be joining your ball club next year. Holiday drives into the lane, got between defenders, nearly upended, no foul. Seattle U the other way, Chris Gweff with it. Gweff has it fanned away by Overton and out of bounds, and with 12.37 remaining here in the second half, dead ball will allow Thomas to come back in, and Turner will retreat. 62-31. 31 point lead, 12.36 to go. And the Huskies are still in their regular rotation. In the regular substitution pattern. Weth with it. And that's got to be all about rhythm, Lenny, I would think. If you, yeah. It'll be interesting to talk to you after the game. Mm -hmm. Many people at this point would yank all their start. I, I mean, my tendency would be to do that. From the coach's standpoint, though, Lenny, he's probably, what's he thinking? Is he thinking, well, we got to carry this momentum into this next crucial game against Washington State? Not, not only the momentum, but the rotation, right. the rhythm of the game. You know, he didn't want to lose any of that. And sometimes when you make a mass substitution, that's what happens. You know? uh, so I, I can understand what coach is thinking. Casual fan, 
Maybe saying, well, gee, you just saw Pondexter get hurt. You, you, you don't want to suffer those injuries, but that's part of the game. So you got to play. Well, you got to play, and, and I would say that you get down to the last five minutes and they got a lead like that, then you'll see everybody out of there. Look at but that this Husky play. team is still hustling, yeah. hustling, scrambling, diving on the floor for loose balls. Their, their defense has been, become a staple of this team this year. Been fabulous, and they want to carry that momentum into that game against Washington State. They never quit, never give up, get on the floor for the ball, make something good come up. That is Carl Irvin, who played hoops at Seattle U. Clinton Richardson, who would go on to win a ring with the Philadelphia 76ers as a starting point guard. And of course, also from Seattle U, the O'Brien twins, Eddie and Johnny O'Brien, who played so beautifully there in the 51 through 53. In fact, met that Washington team in 53, beaten by Ubridge and company. Illinois Overton with the pick, the dash to the lane and the lay-in. And the pressure continues out there from Washington. 64-33, 11-18 to go in the ballgame. 14 steals for Washington tonight. Harris is upended as he and Thomas collect one another. Well, the Huskies are uh, letting the Red Men know but, uh, that they're not on the same level with them. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're saying to Seattle U, you know, okay, welcome back, but this is what you're going to get right now. So they, they're continuing to play the great defense. They're not giving Seattle U a chance to do anything. Brockman the rebound, long outlet to Thomas, scoops ahead to Suggs, glides to the glass and slams it. Set up by John Brockman with that quick release in the outlet. He has 16 and 10 boards. Holiday with a rip, out ahead of Illinois Overton, takes it up the shoulder. He's up in, and Boxley got a piece of him. I'll tell you one thing, Seattle U is a physical basketball team. They are making contact with you now. Well, they're making contact, but, you know, the Huskies are pushing the tempo. They're, they're making them have to retreat. So the only thing they can do then is just reach, grab, push, shove, hold. That's what they're trying to do right now because that's the only way they're even in this game. You're going to see a lot of substitutions pretty soon. Brockman now has his 58th double-double of his career. 16 points, 10 boards. Pac-10 player of the week against the Arizona schools. Average 20 points, 11 rebounds, and shot 61%. Hit free throws. Here's Boxley off the screen. Michael Boxley, the setback, got it. Boxley from Mount Lake Ter Terrace High School. Suggs, who was Mr. Basketball in the state of Missouri last year. Thomas spinning in, double clutches, lays it in. Nifty play. Yeah, well, they, they, they're just outclass Seattle U tonight. There's no way Seattle could stay with this Husky team. They're, they're just too good on both ends. A great steal by Overton. Again, yep. keeping the pressure on, staying up, forcing Seattle U into a lot of mistakes. And here comes your guy now. Here comes Artem Wallace into the lineup. Wallace will come to get John Brockman and a standing O for John Brockman, Pac-10 Player of the Week. And many people, I'm sure most people here in this building, figure Brockman should be the odds-on favorite to win the Pac-10 Player of the Year. We just discussed that a moment ago. I certainly think he meets all the criteria, personal stats and the team numbers speak for themselves. Yeah, well, if you're a Husky fan, you, you've got to be so proud of what John Brockman has accomplished. He has grown, matured. He's become just a terrific player. It's interesting, Lenny, as we look at this Washington team, and the bracketologists have got them as high as the third seed in uh, the West. I saw them third seed behind North Carolina and Memphis today in the ESPN bracket. Uh, I'm kind of curious to, to hear what you have to say about the possibility of them making real noise in the Pac-10 tournament, or I should say in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, you know, I, I say that. I, I think so because of their defense. I think their defense is relentless. I mean, they, they can pressure you up the court. They can pressure you to half court. You know, they'll go to traps. 
the big guy comes out and he's a part of the trapping mm -hmm. process, which makes it harder for them, the other teams to throw over the top of him. So, yeah, I say their defense is going to be a big factor for that. You see uh, under Lorenzo Romar, the two Sweet 16s in 05 and 06. Had to retool and tweak it, and boy, did they come back with a vengeance this year headed toward the tournament. They've got just so many weapons in Thomas and Denton. Here's Wallace inside, double touching, and lays it up and in. The big man from Toledo, Washington, who is rehabbing that right knee at a horrendous knee injury in the last game of the year last year. He's had a very good summer of work just to get back where he can get on the floor. Well, we talk about the Huskies, you know, getting past that first round. Other than Brockman, the two guys who I feel really make a difference on this team, Isaiah Thomas, because of his ability to penetrate, get into the middle, and mm -hmm. Detman, the way Detman has matured and played, he certainly can make the outside shot. He knows how to spread the floor. Wallace goes in up and under. And, and should the Huskies be ranked at three, and there's a, I mean, a very good possibility they will be. They would play down in Portland in the opening rounds, and you can bet there's going to be a lot of purple down. Yeah, oh, no question about it. And we're talking about these guys, but I don't want to leave out the X Factor. The X Factor, uh, Pondex, certainly is going to make his presence felt. And a tournament game would be played at the Rose Garden in Portland. So you'd have better than, uh, what, 17,000 down there. Uh, <laughs> a lot of folks in the seats. And uh, many of them wearing purple as Artem Wallace. Give me a little touch here. Why not? They're working hard to get back. It's all right. For Lenny Wilkins, Kevin Calabro, 70 42 count, 7 59 left here in the second half. All right, it's time now for some trivia. Name the only team other than UCLA, Arizona, or Stanford to win an outright Pac 10 title. Since 81-82. Wow. The only team other than UCLA Arizona or Stanford to win an outright Pac-10 title since 81-82. Outright title. Well, we know it's not Washington. So now we're down to six. <laughs> I'm going to guess, uh, just because they're in the vicinity, uh, the Cougars. Oregon Ducks. Oregon there you Ducks. Have. How about that? The old 102 oh. Boy, did they have a tough year this year. Wow. Oh. Foxley lays it up and in. Okay, that's uh, Luke Rednauer's group. <laughs> Fred Jones played in the NBA. Luke Jackson was a first round draft choice. Just didn't work out for him after an injury. Like drafted by Cleveland who ended up in Cleveland. That was his first stop. That's a pretty good unit right there. Luke Redner had a very good year this year. Continues to have a good year. Milwaukee's clinging to that eight seed in the East. Good to see Luke flourish. Over yeah, there. yeah, I'm really happy for him. You know, he, he's a, a great young man. He's working hard, and uh, that, that's a good change. He, he needed the change, and that's working out well for him. And, and Seattle is playing a little bit better now, but you know it's a different lineup out there. They they're on a, a, like a nine to two run, but uh, you know Seattle, uh, the Huskies have gone to their bench, mm -hmm. and the only player out there is Isaiah Thomas, kind of for direction. Six fifty one left in this one. Seventy forty four the count. Thomas, uh, a part of a very good freshman class this year. You had Drew Holiday down there at UCLA that people were raving about. DeMar DeRozan at USC. We mentioned Clay Thompson at Washington State University. There were some good ones this year to replace uh, some very good players last year. UCLA, of course, lost three players to, to the NBA with uh, Love and Bob Mute and Westbrook having a terrific year this year at. Uh, Oklahoma City with the Thunder. In fact, Westbrook was named the Western Conference Player of the Month for the rookie class. Thomas will get a curtain call. He comes out, as does Gant. Well, you talk about good young players. You know, the state of Washington is very fortunate because there's some good young yeah. players coming out for next year. So uh, hopefully we can keep a lot of them here in the state. <laughs> well, Abdul Gaddy. 
From down in Tacoma, we'll be here at the University of Washington next year. Yeah, yeah, he's committed. Mm -hmm. Six three guard, big mitts. Wolfinger, the seven footer, comes down with a rebound and a miss from Turner. So you got Wolfinger, Wallace, Turner, Suggs, and Overton on the floor with 558 remaining in this one. 72 44 the count. The Huskies really turned their year around after they were beaten by Kansas, the defending champions who obviously lost a, a number of fine people due to graduation or are actually moving on into the NBA. Uh, that was a case of uh, just sloppy play. There were too many guys playing one on one basketball, playing selfish basketball. Oh. Uh, took him aside and he laid down the law. And you saw him recover against Florida the next night. Although they lost the game, they played a better team game. And from that point on, they really, it just clicked for them. It's amazing how that happened. Yeah, and, and you know, you give Roma the credit, like you were saying, Kevin, because he said, hey, if, if we're going to be a team, this is how we have to do it. We can't do it one-on-one. -on -one. You may show that you've got some great individual talent, but we're, we're trying to win. And they bought into it. And that made a huge difference. I'd like to see him play Kansas again now. Kansas, though, right now is looking at their numbers today. They're they're on a real streak. A big fellow, 6'11", Cole Aldrich. Mm -hmm. Averaging 15 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks. And Kansas has come back. They have retooled with Sharon Collins, Aldrich. And ranked consistently in the uh, top 20 in the country. Ranked in the top 15 this week. College hoops, it's going to be a fun, fun tournament this year. See, those teams of the Big East, what an unbelievable year for the Big East as Swanson drives in there and scoops and scores. And this was supposed to be a down year for the Pac-10. They had six teams that made it in last year. We've talked about there be five teams with Arizona possibly on the bubble. Maybe Washington State. There's Wolfinger doing what he does best. That is shooting the three. Seven-footer who shoots the three. Well, do what you do. Do what you do. <laughs> okay. But, you know, you were talking about, it is a great drive to the basket there. And, but you're talking early about, and, and I heard the talk about the, you know, college hoops was going to be down, especially the Pac-10. Yep. They weren't going to be as good. But well, I think there was a lot of young players playing. And a third into the season, all of a sudden, things started to turn around. And teams started to play better and better and better. They all found their identity. It's hard to lose guys like the Lopez twins and Ryan Anderson and Westbrook and Bayless. Love, Weaver, Mayo. We'll be right back with Who Am I in a moment. Been all Washington tonight with 3.53 left here in the second half. It's time now for our Washington version of... I said our Washington version of. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Who led the 84-85 Huskies in these categories? Scoring, boards, assists. I'm going to say Hare Shrimp. I'm going to say Lorenzo Roma. No. <laughs> no, boy, he's easy. He was playing with Herbert Short down in the yeah, Bay Area. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Now, Deppler was a great player, and, and you know, for the Huskies, he came into the pro, had a great career, still lives in the area, and, and actually shows up at games here. And his son playing for Bellevue High School tonight in the tournament. So Deppler's not here, but uh, he will be probably rolling in here this weekend when the Huskies take on Washington State. Mm -hmm. Now this has been a banner night for the Huskies when you get all 12 players scoring. Uh, the coach feels good. Everybody goes in the locker room feels good because they feel like they participated in the game. And with a win on Saturday, they clinch the Pac-10 all by themselves. They are uh, guaranteed no worse than sharing the Pac-10 title, but two things have to happen. Three things actually. UCLA's got to beat both Oregon schools in Los Angeles, and uh, the Huskies would have to lose against Washington State. Overton drives and kicks. Huskies have never won this uh, Pac-10 crown and, and held it by themselves. Now this will be a great opportunity because they'll be all fired up for that game against oh, Washington right. State. The atmosphere yeah. is going to be unbelievable. Yes. In here. Well, you'll be able to feel the electricity. 
Here's Powers with a drop step. To turn around hook will go. Arnold Wallace is after it. Wallace will not let go of that ball. He and Broussard tie up. Last Husky team to win an outright title. You got to go back to 1953 when it was the PCC, not the Pac-10. And Hubricks was leading that crew. He's the only guy I recognize on that team. We mentioned earlier they beat a fine LSU team led by Bob Pettit in the tournament. And of course, Hubrick's number, number 25, retired here. And Brandon Roy's would join right next to him. Uh, his retired number just this season. Boy, what a great year it has been for Washington basketball. Wolfinger knifes in. And a foul call. You can see who breaks number up hung right up there number 25 it didn't just cost what a week or two ago they retired Brandon Roy's number. Yeah. What, a, what an outstanding young man he is. And player. Joe Wolfinger to the free throw line. With a minute 50 left here in this game 81 56 to count. For Seattle U. It was a chance to play against a team that uh, is rated 16th in the country. And they only had to travel five miles by bus. <laughs> Joe Calero, their head coach, <laughs> not his eighth year. So we literally will travel anywhere in the country. They were down in Puerto Rico playing the tournament. They were just in North Dakota playing. They traveled over 4,000 miles by air, and he's lost track of where that odometer is on the bus. A lot of bus miles as well. Well, this is good experience for them. Uh, you know, the Huskies is, is an excellent team. And in the first half, for the first two, three minutes, it seemed like they were going to be able to hang in there. But the Huskies' maturity, experience, kind of took the game away a little bit, a little bit at a time. And by the time we got to halftime, you knew what the outcome was going to be. We started off the back iron, ball volleyed, grabbed by Austin Powers. And ripped away, controlled by Elston Turner. To Wolfinger. Jump stops and walk with the basketball. Seattle University will play that full Division I schedule next season. They would be eligible for an NIT berth if they were extended an invitation. Put on Overton to scoop and score. A minute left in this one, 85 58. Leading scorer for Washington with 12, Isaiah Thomas. Brockman tonight. And actually, Brockman leading the way in scoring a bigger part with 16 points and 10 rebounds, his 58th double double. 41 seconds left in this one in Overton. Trying to knife in, kicks to Turner. Go hold, they'll use clock. Broussard nearly stole it from Suggs. Lorenzo Romer still up off the bench. Still coaching hard. Expecting his team to play hard. Artem Wallace takes it up to the rim. Powered it up and laid it in with 18 seconds left. 87-60. It's always hard for a coach, you know. You've got to coach the whole game. That it's in your blood. You can't help yourself, yep. and it's very hard to sit down, no matter who's out there. Well, that's the most points that Seattle U has given up this season, and it's the Washington Huskies who do it. 87 to 60. Final score here tonight as Washington goes to 23 and 7 overall, 17 and 1. At home. Good seeing you again, Lenny. All right, great to be here. <laughs> and good luck, Washington, in the tournament. For Lenny Wilkins, I'm Kevin Calabro. We say so long from Seattle, Washington. Our final again here tonight. The Huskies 87, the Red Hawks of Seattle University 60. And now let's send it to the College Hoops Northwest Studios. Angie Mentink standing by with Francis Williams.